They're yours. Hit that one more time. I am the number one determinant of the success or failure. Here we go. Of my students. Hey, y'all, you have a strong summer. Kick some butt next year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's the mindset. That's the attitude. Love you guys. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's week 118 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let's see who we got here this morning. We got uh we got our Marsha Poe. I met her a few weeks ago out there in Charlotte. Waking up early in San Diego. Good to see you, Marsha. We got my man, Demetrius Scott, in the building. We got she Dr. Sheikha Houston in the building. We got Janine Wilkins in the building. She met my man, Mark, uh, Dr. Mark Abraham, out there in Alaska the other day. Coach Central, good to see you. Takesha High is in the building. We got Chicago in the building. Dot McKeever Jeter in the building. We got Jocelyn Nelson, Laura Meyer. She, uh, Shakitha Jeffries, Van Vanessa Zeskin. We got Felicia Wilson in the building. Well, we got my man, Principal Michael Benton in the building. Principal Scott Savage in the building. What's all these Chicago folks doing on here this morning? I know why y'all here, right? So we got, we got my wife, the queen in the building. Kimberly Broughton Cafele is here. Rodney Richardson's in the building. Melissa Jones Chunu. Dominique Price Dumerville is in the building. Yo, Derek up there in Minneapolis is in the building live. Principal Tammy Taylor, South Carolina. She was telling Sheikha she don't want people, she don't want Sheikha to say soon to be doctor. Now, you know, I'm already saying it. Soon to be Dr. Tammy Taylor. We got, uh, what we got, what we got, Rashad Davis, man. Hey, Rashad, I thought about you, man, with all that rain. I hope you're all right out there, man. I, I should say the monsoon. I've never seen Vegas flooded. I didn't even know that Vegas gets flooded, right? But uh, then I did some reading on it this morning. I said, that's it happens sometimes, you know, those monsoons every few years. So I hope you're all right out there, you and the family. John Herricks and anybody out there in Kentucky and St. Louis, uh, I guess it was southeastern Kentucky. Hope everybody's all right. Folks in St. Louis, hope everybody's all right. Just some serious rain, man. The climate is out of whack. We had it last summer. I'm praying we're not going to have it another summer. That, that water was, man, I could have just gone swimming in my basement, man. It was, it, was, it was just too much, too much. What we got here, we got Charlene Williams in the building out there in Vancouver, Washington. Man, I appreciate you getting up so early and seeing it, as they say in the church, seeing it not robbery to be here with us this morning hit that share button hit that retweet button as you come in folks let them know i was about a minute or two late me and my guests we were having a conversation but um, we got jelani cortez in the building out there in richmond lissandra brackens renee graham they're in the building let me see if i can say this correctly shashara blackshear in the building cynthia mar uh farmer jennifer mortvit mates in the building the boss educator is in the building that's that's dr laquanta nelson she got this brand man let me tell y'all you gotta check her out on facebook the boss educator right just check her out she's doing big things in this in this in, in in these consulting streets out here in america so make sure you check out the boss educator she's got she's got a powerful message alan Kowart's in the building Chantel cook's in the building anika uh, Williams is in the building. I'm getting ready to get it started, y'all. Grace Castanedo is in the building. CC in the DMV is in the building. Shaw Lewis, my man, Car Principal Carlos Baggage is in the building. Man, 
I'm gonna have him on here. You know, he'll be on here in 2023 because you you gotta you 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 just gotta hear his story. You gotta hear how he and I met, right? It's it's I mean it's it's special. You know, just the way we met, his journey. He's a principal. First day was yesterday. He doing his thing, man. But you know, when when you're looking for it, I'm getting ready to get started. But I gotta say this about Carlos Baggage. I'm, I'm not gonna get all into the detail because you know I gotta get started. But I got to say this, if you're ever looking for somebody that said, I don't care what the odds are, <laughs> I don't care what the obstacles are, I don't care what the challenges are, I don't care what the age requirements are, Carlos Baggage is your dude. Because I kept telling this guy, wait, 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 not yet, wait. He like, I ain't waiting for nothing. I, I got a vision. I'm on a mission. If I got to drive an hour one way, I'm going to make this thing happen. And, 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 and I'm saying, like, pump the brakes. But he said, no, I ain't pumping no brakes, man. Principal baggage. If you're looking for some motivation, you better start following principal baggage. Carlos baggage. That's the man. He going to be on this platform. And, and sometime in 2023, he used to ask me, like, could I get on? But I'm, I'm saying to myself, you got to earn your way on. He has earned his way on this platform. Carlos Baggage, right? So I'll be in touch, sir. <laughs> Let me get started, y'all. I know it's a lot more to call out, but hit the share button. Hit the retweet button. I'm feeling fire this morning. So we're going to have a good one, man. So hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. And let me welcome everybody formally right now by saying to you, good morning, greetings, welcome to week 118, y'all didn't hear me, 118 of the virtual AP Leadership Academy. And as I always say, Josh Tovar, I don't know about you. I'm not there with you, but I think I know. I mean, I really think I know because you checked in, not just the folks whose names I see, but it's a whole lot of folks that just don't make comments. How do I know? Because y'all be telling me when I see you in person. Oh, I'm with you, Kefele. I just don't make the comments. So I don't mind that. Everybody not in the comments. But if I could speak for me, just give me a second. Let me speak for me. I got you. I, I need you to know how I feel this morning. Because I'm hoping that how I feel rubs off on how you feel, especially those of you who are going back to school next week. So if you so so to let you know, I'm on fire. That's how I'm feeling, man. Woo! That's how I'm feeling. I said my woo too early. That 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 just gives you an indication. But why why you feel like this, Kafele? Man, last week. I'm in like five states, even doing a virtual. I'm going from city to city, man, just, just spreading the love. That's what it is, spreading the love, man, meeting people. They got my book in their hand, like, yo, Kefele, I got it. Could you sign it? Could we get the selfie? Man, I mean, that means something, man, when you're putting in this work and then you get to places and they got your work in their hand, then they want to take a pic with you. Right? They taking notes when you're speaking. Oh, man. That keeps me up here. So I'm just going to tell you one more time. I'm on fire! Woo! Ah! That's where I am, man. That's where I am. And I'm saying to you, you got to bring it like that, man. I'm not saying, like, act like me. They might throw you out of town. I don't mean that. I mean, but inside of you, like you could be walking like this, right? But 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 that's the facade. But inside, man, you blazing, man. You burning up, man. The thunder and the lightning, man. Do you hear me? Woo! Hey, y'all, let's go. Hit that share button. Hit that retweet button. Let them know, man. I got a guest on here. It's going to bring it. Somebody new on here, they said, man, he 
he wasn't like that in Kansas. <laughs> nah, man. Kansas ain't get this until my closing when I say, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. That's how I close, man. That's all. That's all my 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 colleagues in Kansas got. I had to keep it mellow, man. You know, I read the room. Some rooms they need me to bring that thunder. Other rooms, you know, I was in Wichita, Kansas. Other rooms, you know, you feel them out, man. They may, yo, he can't be bringing it like that now. But when I'm home, you look look, look behind me, y'all. I'm home, baby. <laughs> ain't nothing, ain't nothing holding me back at home now. I paid for this mortgage. It's paid for too. I don't owe the I don't owe the bank nothing. <laughs> Look, let's go, y'all. It's it's week eight one eighteen. It's July thirtieth. It's 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 the virtual AP Leadership Academy. Let me give you my quick commentary. Someone might have said they say I thought you gave a commentary. Let me give you my quick commentary. Listen. I'm, my, my author today wrote this book. I mean, my guest today wrote this book right here, Building Bridges, right, by Dr. Don Parker. And I said, let me take that title and use it for my for my, my commentary and also throughout my questioning. So I'm saying, I'm asking you a question in this short commentary. What bridges are you building? Let me ask that again. What bridges are you building? In other words, I'm asking you, what bridges are you building to your staff? What bridges are you building to your students? What bridges are you building to individual staff members? What bridges are you building to individual students? What bridges are you building to the parent community? What bridges are you building to the community? What bridges are you building to central office administration? I'm asking you, what bridges? And them, them two Bs are screwing me up. Y'all hear? What bridges are you building? Because if there's no bridge, and instead a gulf in between you and whomever you're interacting with, then they're gonna just fall in the water. So, what bridge are you building to connect with the stakeholders? that you need to be connected to. What bridges are you building? Well, guess what? Our guest's gonna answer that question today. So let me get quickly, quickly. I, I mean, I went a little long cause I got, I had extra fire. I don't know where that's coming from, but let, let, me, let me go through these announcements. To the first time is out there, welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks for being here. And don't let this be your last trip. Keep on flying in. I got the jet for you here. I picked this up the other day. I got the jet. I fly United, so I had to get the United jet. So I got the jet. Keep on flying in every Saturday at 1055 Eastern because once you fly in, then you then, then, then this landing spot is the connection. Then we're going to take you to another level, right? So I got the jet with me, man. So stay locked in now that you're here. See, I got the lock too. Stay locked in. So welcome to the first timers. Congrats to all them folks getting these, these leadership positions, man. Woo! I'm getting an email a day or an inbox, a DM, whatever it is. Every day, somebody is writing me saying, I got the job. I got two on the computer now that I still didn't respond to yet because I respond to all of them. I got the job, Kefele, man. I've been watching the Academy. I've watched the interview videos. I got your books, man. I listened to you. I got the job. That's what I'm talking about. That's right, boss educated. Another level. Another level. Let's go. So real quick, y'all. Um, you know, this book, this is what accompanies this Academy. You may have seen my post the other day. I signed the contract this week. Volume two, volume three, volume four. Oh, yeah, man. Ain't nothing stopping me. Volume two will be out next May. 
Volume 3 will be out May 2024, and Volume uh, 4 will be out May 2025, man. I ain't playing with this. I ain't playing. When it comes to assistant principal, I'm not playing Dwight Carter. Hey, Dwight Carter, I'm not playing, man. I ain't playing with this, man. I told the top, told my publisher, send me a contract for three books, man. I ain't playing with this. We're going to make sure that assistant principals got what they need, man. Right? So I say to somebody out there, you can't be playing either. You look at yourself. I got another prop, this one. You look at yourself in that mirror, man, and you say to yourself, like, like get your mirror right now, right? Get your mirror. Hold it up to yourself right now in real time and just say, I ain't playing with you. Right? Just hold your mirror up, man. Look at you and say, I ain't playing with you. I ain't playing with this. See, that's that's the mindset, baby. That's the mindset. Right? You, you, you I mean, just wake up and walk out and say, I ain't playing. Because I ain't playing. And you got to have the same thinking. I ain't playing. Let's go, y'all. Man, I'm wearing the, the look at that. Somebody probably said, yo, that shirt kind of different, right? <laughs> Black crackers. Like, what, what, what he promoting? What's he selling, right? It was a team in Atlanta, a white team called the Atlanta Crackers. And a lot of time, the Black, the Negro League teams would take the name of the, the team, whether it be the major league team or the minor league team of the white community, and they just add Black to it. So they were the Atlanta Crackers. I mean, I guess me, I don't know what it means. Crack the ball with the bat, whatever it means. So they call, they put black on it. So the Atlanta Black Crackers, right? So this is that's what I'm wearing. You know, I got a I got a big time guest on here, right? And I did something. I I I, I failed to. <laughs> I gotta I gotta I gotta do this in real time, y'all. I, I I failed to um print up his bio. Right. So just work with me because I'm a, I'm a have it here. I just got to get it up. But I'm a, uh, so just work with me for a second while I while I get this. Y'all y'all be patient. This is real unprofessional, but just be real patient with me. I, I, I got up like three hours early to be ready. And and, and now I, I don't have the bio in front of me. So I'm getting ready to have it in front of me because I got it right here. So just work with me. Work with me. Don't leave me. Don't alert. Don't and don't judge me either. Just uh, understand that I, I, I was so good engrossed into the questions that uh i forgot to bring up the bio so it's i think i got it here i got it here i got it here here it is here it is so let me get my guest up here now and we getting ready to get rocking and then i'll get to the bio so here is my my man my brother let me change my background man i've been man i'm so out of whack here and uh here we go here we go my man Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Oh, speaking on behalf of everybody, I'm sure that everybody is on fire, great, and ready to go with some more good content. So I'm glad to see you. You know, hey, hey Don, let me, let me read your bio first, and then I got this off script question for you. Okay. Um, here we go, folks. I want you to know who's on the screen. We got Dr. Don Parker who's a highly sought after, hear that a word, that, that, that again, highly sought after speaker and professional development provider. In other words, he's in this consultant business like I am now, but let's hear what he's done. He specializes in supporting teachers to build trusting relationships with students and improving the culture and climate of schools to organize, to, to optimize staff and students' experience. Dr. Parker is a former principal and served as I served at Posen School in Posen, Illinois. So that's 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 one of them Chicago land areas right outside of Chicago, where he improved the culture, implemented a resilience program, managed the implementation of restorative justice, and increased attendance and student achievement. Dr. Parker has been an educator since 1997 with a background as a teacher, dean of students, assistant principal of student life, assistant principal for curriculum and instruction, and assistant principal for activities and athletics. His teaching experiences included working in inner city Chicago public schools. Dr. Parker was also an adjunct professor and instructed graduate courses to students seeking their master's degree in curriculum and instruction at National Lewis University in Bolingbrook, Illinois. 
His diverse background and education has provided him with the knowledge of how to best apply evidence-based methods and student interventions to improve student behavior and increase student achievement. It's a lot there. Dr. Parker has a strong belief in creating a school climate in which the entire staff strives for excellence to meet the academic and social and emotional needs of each student. He is presented throughout the United States at distinguished educational conferences, including ASCD, Every Student Succeeds Act Conference, Staff Development for Educators, and the National Principals Conference, just to name a few. Dr. Parker is the author of the book, Building Bridges, Engaging Students Through the Power of Relationships. He is a keynote speaker and expert workshop facilitator and delivers professional development on topics such as building trusting relationships with, the ch with challenging students, building resilience in students, culturally responsive schools, taking students from trauma to triumph, supporting uh, ACE students and burning up instead of burning out. Teacher mental health, teacher mental health awareness. Dr. Parker received a bachelor's degree in physical education and health from Wartburg College in uh, Waverly, Iowa, a master's degree in education administration from Governor State University, a doctorate in education and leadership from Argosy University in Chicago, Illinois, and his Illinois superintendent certificate from St. Francis University in Joliet, Illinois. Woo! It's a lot there, Doc. Man, after all that, man, I feel like I got to come out with my boxing gloves on, man, in the middle of the ring, ready to go, man. That's one heck of an introduction. Had to, had, had Thank to you so appreciate it. Hey, hey, Doc, you know, you young, you um, and you've accomplished a lot in a short period of time. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot on this one, um, but, but, but in a good way. Do you remember when, where, and when we met? Oh, absolutely. Could Las you, Vegas. Could, could you holler at everybody and tell, tell them how we met? This is how we met. So I was speaking and you were, you, you were a keynote speaker at the staff development for educators conference in Las Vegas. And you were doing a breakout session and I sat in room during your breakout session, listening, just soaking it all in, catching all those nuggets that, you know, you drop. And I'm like, man, principal K. Fele, he is the truth. And it was my first time hearing you speak. And this was probably back in 2014 or something like yeah. that. And so after your session, I came up to you. You know, I told you how much I admired you, told you how much I've been learning from you. I've been following you, just studying your, your work on what you call the attitude gap. And I was like, man, this brother deep. I got to meet him. And so I stood in this long line, <laughs> you know, because everybody lined up to meet you and shake your hand and get your picture. And then finally it was my turn, and I just told you how much I've been following your work, how much I admire you, and how much I thank you uh, for you know, the way you pour into people. And then we got that selfie. And yeah. then uh, I think it was a day or two later, you uh, you texted me. He was like, hey, you know what? I see your, your face here in the program. I didn't know that was you. He was like, you know, you should have told me who you are because I like to see who, other, who all the other speakers are who are out here. And then ever since then, me and you just kept in touch and, uh, when I was the principal at Lincoln, my district hired you to come in and do our opening keynote speech. And then um, I seen you just uh, this past December. You came to Chicago to speak. Yeah, uh, right. you, you were the keynote speaker at that conference. And, you know, I was doing an administrator's academy uh, for the conference. And, you know, I just love keeping up with you, staying in touch and, of course, continuing to follow and learn from you, my brother. And see, and, and I appreciate that because, see, I, I, I did the same thing because once I met you in Vegas, I kept up with you. And 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 see, I'm, I'm saying I, I bring this up for this reason. I'm, we're talking to an educator audience, obviously, leaders. But as 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 a as a leader myself, as a principal, not only was I a principal, but I was a student of leadership. Mm -hmm. so, so as a speaker. Not only what am I, was I, still am a speaker, but I'm a student of the speaking industry, mm -hmm. right? So, so forget about the content, just the industry alone. So a lot of folks out here in this business, I keep up with them. You know, I talked to a lot of people. They're like, how you how you know this and how you know that? I said, because I keep up with you. Yeah. Right? I follow what you're doing. Right. I follow mm -hmm. your growth because we're all in this thing together. I'm not in competition with anybody, but I'm a student of what I do. So, so to flip that on to the audience, because this is a, a professional uh, learning platform, 
make sure that you're not just effective as a leader, but make sure that you are a student of leadership and that you're getting to know other people. You're networking with other people who have who have the same challenges that you have. But be a student of leadership, not just a leader of a building. Right. So good stuff. Let's jump into it, Don. I'm going to call you Don and Dr. Parker interchangeably. That's all right. All right. Do it. You know, um, as an educator, and this is these are my first three questions I ask every guest. As an educator, who is Dr. Don Parker? Well, um, I am a bridge builder. Uh, I believe in relationships and I believe that education will level the playing field, you know, for our students and our youth. I truly believe that because that's what it was for me. Um, one thing that was in my house when I was growing up is you have to get a good education. And once you get that education, you know, they can't take it away from you. Yeah. And so my parents always stressed to me the importance of, you know, getting an education and then just letting me, letting that education take me to the next level. And that was the belief in my household. That's, I grew up under that roof. And it was true because I come from humble beginnings. And I will tell you that, you know, as I matriculated throughout school and, you know, my, my learning and, you know, earning my degrees and it just opened up a world of opportunities for me. And now I share that same message, you know, with my students, you know, when I was a teacher, when I was a dean, when I was an assistant principal, as a principal, I just let students know that I really truly buy into knowledge is power. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you have to, you know, covet your education, like take it personal, take it serious. And you will see that some opportunities that you probably felt that you weren't awarded, you know, you just continue with your education, learn more, continue to grow and develop. And those opportunities will come to you. I love it. I love it. You know, you, you, you're you obviously very intelligent. You're a brilliant young man. You, you have you have a doctorate degree. You have something that I will never own. And that's a doctorate degree. And, and, and you're doing a lot of things. You're, you're, you're all over the country. I, I noticed on my Facebook um, pages and on Twitter that there was a lot of excitement about the fact that you're going to be on this broadcast this morning. So, so, so your name is spreading. So, so, so my question to you is, of all the directions you could have gone, although I heard, I, I, I kind of got the gist in your first response, but I want to be very specific now. Why education over everything else that you could have done well um so of course like all the boys growing up in the hood you asked me what i wanted to be when i was a shorty and i said you know what i want to be an nba or i want to play in the nfl and i played a lot of sports growing up but when i hit high school you know uh you know right before high school it was a tumultuous time in my life you know, my mom and dad uh, went through a divorce when I was in junior high school. And then, you know, I was on the fence. I could have went either way. But my coaches kept me under their wings. And I had developed such a strong relationship with my coaches, especially my PE teachers who were also my coaches. And they just looked out for me. They continued to encourage me and support me. And it's like they became my real life role models. And with that being said, it's like, I want to be like them so much. I said, you know, what? when I go to college, I'm going to be a PE teacher because I told them I even uh, went back after I graduated and earned my bachelor's degree. I said, you know what? I got this bachelor's degree because of you guys. I want to be a PE teacher because what you guys did for me, I want to do for youth that's like myself. And so that's why I chose to go into the field of education. So 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 here you are, you you come into the field, uh, physical education slash health. And then at some point, you decide, I, I want leadership. You know, I, I, I remember when my some point was and I decided leadership. But with me, and as I ask everybody, and it's interesting how all the answers are different. For me, I, there was a lot of reasons that I wanted to lead a school. But then there was this narrow reason that I wanted to lead a school. And it was all tied up into what I wanted to be able to accomplish as it related to the young men with me being born an African-American um, boy. So that was my specificity where I said, yeah, I want to be a leader for all these different reasons, but it's these boys in terms of what I want to accomplish. And, and if I can accomplish it, 
then my leadership did not, I, I did not maximize my potential. So with that being said, I want to ask you, did you have something beyond the broad, the narrow that you said, if I get in there, when I get in there, this thing has got to be accomplished. Did you have one of those? You know what? It's, it's funny. Not really. Um, my path is different because, you know, um, I feel like God give us what we need. It may not be what we want, but, you know, he puts us in the path to lead to his purpose, what he has for us. Mm -hmm. So even when I went to um, finish my bachelor's degree and I got my first year teaching job, you know, I wanted to be a PE teacher and a coach. And uh, my principal said, you know what? He was like, there's something that they didn't teach you in undergrad. He was like, we have so many other PE teachers. None of them want to teach health. And so although I told you you were going to be in a PE, you were going to be in a gym teaching PE, he was like, we need a health teacher. He was like, and what they didn't teach you in undergrad is that in the real world, there's something called seniority. And you, my friend, are lowest on the totem pole. Mm. <laughs> so since all the veteran PE teachers took all the PE courses, I was in the health classroom. And in the health classroom, I learned about the health curriculum and teaching students about how to make healthy choices. And Principal Kefele, that's what led me to become an educational leader, or at least got me on the path, is because after being in the health classroom for seven to eight years, I was teaching health and PE and driver's ed. It was a, a mix of courses that I taught as a high school PE teacher. But that health curriculum in particular has a lot of elements that has to do with social and emotional learning. Yeah. And so I had great relationships with my students. I was able to tell them about my experiences and the choices I made to get me to where uh, I am and how they can make choices that benefited them in the long run and not just acting off impulse and doing things that would get them in trouble. And so uh, having that skill to teach students social emotional learning, that's what led me to be a dean of students. And I didn't see that coming. Really, when I went to education, I thought that I'd become a PE teacher and a coach and be one of those coaches that at the end of my 30 year career, you know, they'll name the gym after me. You know, that's what I had in the back of my head. I would retire as a PE teacher and uh, a basketball coach. But like I said, God led me in another direction. And once I yeah. got that dean's position, uh, the superintendent of the district told me that they have a tuition reimbursement program. And if I went to school, that they would reimburse me for earning my doctorate degree. And so, you know, back then, I, like like you, Principal Kefele, I trade my doctorate degree for your experience seven days out the week. <laughs> because that experience is rich. Yeah, yeah, doctorate degree is nice, but I'm telling you, experience is what really helps you shape your story and teach other people from your experience. So much respect to you, my brother. You Somebody got to give you an, honor, an honorary doctorate degree one of these days. I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet, but you definitely <laughs> heard that, that, that doctor. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, man. And, you, and you know, it, it comes up a lot, man. People like, you don't have an honor? Nah, I ain't got nothing. You about. got experience. I got a doctorate in experience. And yeah. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> they don't want it with you, uh, Principal Fele. They don't want it with you, bro. <laughs> I appreciate you. You know, we um we, we call in this session building bridges, folks, building bridges between administration and staff. And, and when Dr. Parker wrote this book, Building Bridges, you know, he's, he's, he's really talking about that bridge between the adults and the children. And I thought about the platform and I thought about the questions I could ask. And then I said, no, nah, let me use that title. And because he's got that principal's experience, I said, let me talk about admin and staff. Because so many of you on this call, you write me privately. You, Those of you that do, you know that. And you ask me to talk about this topic. So I said, here's the best time to do it because of this book. So if you don't have this, by the way, you, you, you want to get this in your hands. Building Bridges, if you can go right to Amazon by Dr. Parker, right? Uh, go right to Amazon, get yourself a copy. Let's bring it back to number one today, right? You know, hey, 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 hey Don, you know, it's... One of the things I love about this platform, and by the way, folks, hit that share button for me. Hit the retweet button for me. Let them know we're here. We're live. Donna, share again. You know what you do with them Facebook uh, posts. So, uh, so please, uh, those Facebook groups. So please hit that share button. Hit the retweet button. Let them know or call somebody. Let them know we're here. We're live. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, you know, one of the things I love, Doc, is when I have guests who are active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It makes... It makes putting together my agenda so much easier than going through a book because because 
if if a person tweeted, it's something that's this dear to them. So I found these three tweets that were recent that you tweeted, and I said, what what a great way to start and segue into this topic. Let me read to you. You stated recently in July, I tell my teachers, find one or two things you love about that student who may be giving you a hard time. Principals evaluating teachers need to do the same. Look for and point out strengths and develop those weaknesses over time. Teachers need our support like students need theirs. True. So the, the emphasis that you place was look for and point out strengths and develop those weaknesses. So, so my reaction to that was the pointing out the strengths is the easy part, right? Yeah. But I'm asking you, how does a leader help a teacher? How does a leader point out weaknesses or, 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 or position themselves to develop weaknesses when we're talking about a situation between two human beings, which it could be very sensitive mm -hmm. to the recipient because that person may not see whatever this is as a weakness, as a deficiency. So how do we, how do we point this out while maintaining a focus on building bridges? Because I'm going to use that title throughout this interview, mm -hmm. building bridges between administration and staff. Well, you know what? Like we were talking about earlier with that experience, Principal Cafele, is because, you know, we've been teachers before. We've been evaluated. And, you know, there's a saying, you, you're familiar, everybody's, everyone is familiar with the saying, it takes one to know one. Yeah. And so uh, as you're observing a teacher, you can see, hey, you know what? That teachers have a lot of great strengths. You know, I used to do some of the same things when I delivered instruction in my classroom. But then a teacher also has some areas of improvement. And the reason I know is because uh, maybe a evaluator point out some of those same areas of improvement that I have. And so when I talk to teachers, I, I tell them the way you build the bridge is you tell them, you know what? I want you to be the best teacher that you can be. And I want to help you develop, continue to, to work on your strengths, but I also want to help you develop, you know, those areas of improvement. And then I, I become vulnerable. I share my experience. You know what? You know, when I was a first, second, third, fourth, fifth year teacher, you know, I did some of those same things. And then when I tried A, B, or C, I noticed that I would get greater results. So uh, I'm here to support you. I want you to know I want you to be the, the best, most effective teacher that you can be. And, you know, here's some suggestions for your practice going forward. You know, here's a couple of things to try. But don't stop doing what you're doing because I always point out those strengths as well. And I let them know where they really, you know, are making a lot of progress, making a lot of gains and doing a great job. And I just continue to build them and encourage them to let them know I see their strengths. And then the next time I come in, I'm going to look for you to take some of those suggestions I gave you to so you can continue to grow. I love it. So, so Doc, let me let me be let me be teacher and take, give me, turn, turn your volume down slightly because I'm here. I'm hearing me through you. Let me be teacher who's resistant to that. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 Dr. Parker, um, I, I feel that I'm very much capable in this particular area. Uh, it's the, the problem's not me. The problem are these students and, and, and home life and, and, and all that kind of thing. And but but in terms of my skill set, I'm I'm fine. We, we, how, how would you respond to that? Well, you have to give evidence as for what you're talking about. And so if you can have evidence and specific concrete examples of what you mean, you have to present the teacher with evidence. OK, this is what I saw. This is what I observed and have that teacher reflect on it. Uh, a lot of people won't grow is because they don't self-reflect. Mm. And in order to grow, you have to self-reflect. And another reason that people absolutely another people, another reason that people won't grow is because it's uncomfortable. And so I have a phrase that says, you know, you have to become comfortable in uncomfortable situations or you have to be comfortable, you know, being uncomfortable. Yeah. And so as as a teacher, as a leader, whatever it is. You have to self-reflect. And when you self-reflect, you're going to open up that can of worms. And you're going to find a lot of things that you could be doing better. You're going to look back and see a lot of mistakes that you have made. But you know what? You uh, look back to grow yeah, and see what your mistakes was. You look forward to just continue to grow and make that progress. So I encourage teachers to self-reflect. I love it. I love it. You know, in another tweet, the shorter one, you, you said growth is not optional. 
what got you here won't get you there. I, I, I love that so much. I got I got to say it again. What got you here won't get you there. Continue investing in yourself. Two parter with this one. Number number one, explain that tweet to us. All right. So you you have to prepare for the future. All right. We cannot stay stagnant. And so the things that you did to become a great teacher, that's great. You know, and you're a great teacher. But you want to take that next step to being maybe a dean or an assistant principal. All right. You have to start doing things to show that I have the skills in order to be a dean or an assistant principal. And then once you become that assistant principal, now you have to continue to grow so you can make it to the next level. And so, you know, if you're not improving, you're getting worse. If you think that you're good where you are, then you're delusional. So we have to realize that, you know, just like if me with my fitness level, if I work hard, I get in shape and then I stop working out. I'm not going to stay the same at that level of fitness that got me here. You know, day by day, my fitness level is going to decrease. However, if I continue to work out, not only do I maintain my fitness, but I also maximize and optimize it and I continue to get better. So what we have to do is do do like like you teach. We have to read. We have to research. We have to study. We have to go to conferences. We have to listen to educational leaders like you. And we have to uh, learn from people who are on that next level. We have to get mentors. We have to let people know we're open to mentorship. And that's the way we grow to get to that next level because, you know, it's not optional. We all have to continue to, you know, make ourselves better and make the people around us better as well. You know, I, I love what you said because it, it segued right to my part B of this question where, where I want to ask you to, to, to talk about, talk to us about building bridges with staff to the extent that what we're offering, that advice we're offering is actually welcomed with, with, with open arms by, accepted and welcomed by, with open arms by the staff that we are coaching in the first place, mm -hmm. which ties into the previous question. Well, you know what? It's about trust. Uh, you know, some teachers don't really trust that administrators are not coming in their room to get you. It's that I got you moment. All right. And so I tell my teachers, look, I don't I'm not looking for dirt. If dirt is there, I'm going to see it. I'm going to find it. That's not why I'm coming in to observe and coming in to evaluate. And so what I do is I make sure I build trust with my staff. And so when I come in and I give those suggestions that they know is coming from uh, a good a good heart. So they don't have to worry about, oh, he coming in and he was just looking for things to mark me off on a, and give me a bad evaluation. No, it's not that. You know what? My success is tied to your success. And yeah. so why would I want you not to be successful? All right. Your success is tied to your student's success. We all want the students to be successful. So when I'm giving you suggestions or giving you recommendations just off, you know, uh, my experience or best practices and education or evidence-based strategies and methods that you can be using in your classroom, all right, it's to help you grow. So I establish that trust so they know when I come in, just like, you know, I have an open door policy in my office. Teachers come talk to me whenever you want to. Let me know what's on your mind. I'm establishing trust. I like for my teachers to trust that they can have an open door policy as well for me or anyone from my administrative team to walk in just to see what's going on, to know if, if we're uh, coming in to observe or we're having a feedback conversation for you is based on your growth. You know, and, and, and listening to you, there was a, there was a comment here and I, I, I scrolled back to get to it. Miss Annie Mewborn. She said, please share advice for a new administrator. And, and, and the first thing I'm going to say um, to, um, the, to new administrator, Miss Milborn M Mewborn is that all of this, is advice for a new administrator. Everything you're going to hear in this 90 minutes is is advice for a new administrator. But I'll I'll, I'll say this um, in, in in addition to it, as it relates to everything that Dr. Parker just said. We're not as leaders, meaning you. We're not there to get you. We are there to help grow you. Right. And always keep that in mind when you walk into that classroom, when you have that pre observation conference, when you have that post observation conference. Our role is not to get you, as Dr. Parker just said. We're not looking for the dirt. The dirt will manifest. We'll see the dirt. You walk into somebody's house and it's dirty, you're going to see it. You walk into that hotel room and they didn't clean it right, the dirt's going to show up. 
you won't even be able to see the good of the room because the dirt has revealed itself and taken away all of your attention. It happens to me in hotel rooms all the time that are not spotless the way that I would want them to be. So make sure that you remember, we're not there to get you. We're there to help grow you. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, Doc, you you know, um, this last tweet that I took, that I I recorded of three, it, it, it states, here's a quote from my new book. So you got this new book coming out. Uh, that'll be published by Solution Tree on leadership and equity. You said if the principal doesn't have the ability to level the playing field for teachers and staff, the faculty will be unable to level the playing field for their students. I want to read that again. If the principal doesn't have the ability to level the playing field for teachers and staff, the faculty will be unable to level the playing field for their students. So I got a two-parter for this one as well. How does the leadership, therefore, this is something that new administrator may may even ask the question, how does the leadership go about leveling the playing field for staff? What are your thoughts? I'm going to use a quick example and then I'm going to, you know, talk to it in real life. So when I was an athletic director, assistant principal for activities and athletics. I had over 25 sports programs that I was responsible for and over 60 extracurricular activities. Now, the coaches on my staff were teachers and coaches. And so in Illinois, there's a lot of administrative things you have to do with our, you know, Illinois statewide sports organization. There's a lot of things that uh, coaches, teachers have to do, a lot of paperwork. And so I told my secretary, I said, hey, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to take care of all this administrative stuff for our coaches. Instead of us always having to email them and follow up with them, we know that they teach and have many classes they got to teach. And then they got to meet up with their players and coach after school. So what we have to do is I'm going to put them in a position where all they had to worry about was the health and well-being of their players and the X's and the O's so they can execute, you know, on that field or on that court. And so I shielded them from all that administrative stuff. Me and my secretary shielded them from all that stuff. It's the same thing as a principal. When you're a principal, all right, as you work your way up in administration, the higher you go, uh, the more political that you see that things are. And as an educational leader, especially as a principal, there's a lot of politics and things that happen in schools and in districts. We don't need our teachers focusing on that. All right. We want our teachers to focus on, you know, their planning, their preparation, their delivery of instruction and creating a culture of learning. That's what we want from our teachers. So all this other stuff, guys, I don't want to try to worry about that. And so uh, at the beginning of every year staff meeting, I tell my teachers, hey, I got your back. And when you think about somebody having your back, you think about somebody, you know, standing behind you. But I said, what I'm going to do is I turn my back to my staff. I said, this is how I'm leading in front of you. So anybody who's trying to get to you, they got to come through me, whether it's parents, you know, whether it's students. Where the central office, I'm always going to have your back and defend you for any situation. Now, if you really did something wrong where you made a mistake, we can go behind closed doors and talk about that. But I'm not going to throw you in front of the bus in front of anybody. Mm. All right. I want you to know that I'm leading from the front. They got to come through me to get to you. I want you to be able to concentrate and focus on the business of, of what I need you to do. That's where the rubber meets the road, where that instruction happens in that classroom. Your, your response, Don, really resonated with me. Uh, I, I want to put the mirror up for our audience this morning. And I got a question for y'all. Do you have the back of your staff? The aspiring folks, will you have the back of your staff? Because I, I remember, uh, uh, Dr. Parker, I remember having to protect staff from stuff that they knew nothing about. Right. They don't even know what's going on because I got your back. So let me let, let me intervene before it gets to your level, right? Absolutely. But the staff doesn't know that unless we, you know, we essentially brag about it. And mm-hmm. tell, oh yeah, I, did, I took care of this, I took care of that. You may not have even needed to know what I took care of. Let's, let, let's just let work business be normal, right? Absolutely, facts, true. Yeah. If it was something really egregious, in my mind and it got out and that's and and and, and that's what the implementation coming from central office is and now i gotta fight for you mm-hmm. yeah then you'll know i fought for you right but 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 the bottom line to somebody watching this morning do you have your staff's back 
Mm-hmm. But see, when you got their back, that's elevating morale, man. Absolutely. You know, my leader got me. 100%. And you know what? And what it does, too, it's a two-way street because, you know, we need support from teachers as oh, well. Right. Because there's so many times we have to Each. often ask them to do things that they won't get paid for. Or, you know, we want them to do, uh, we want them to share in our vision for the school and go above and beyond the call of duty. But when they know that you got their back, they're going to have yours, man. I love my staff. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I have some of the best dedicated and committed teachers. You know, I love them. They love me. And it took that trust over time. It didn't happen overnight. It developed over time. And so that's another thing for principals. You know, invest in that relationship with your staff. And over time, you will see that how that relationship, you know, pays dividends. You can leverage that relationship, you know. Uh, it's a two-way street. Two-way street, you know. And 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 I've I've said this on here before, but I'll I'll say it again I, without going into detail. That if you're leading the right way, if you're going against the status quo because you know the status quo is not benefiting your students, you're going to run into friction. Mm-hmm. That's, I promise you that you're you're going to run into pr- friction at some point. But the question is, when that friction arises, does your staff, as you just said, Dr. Parker, does your staff have your back? Mm -hmm. Do the parents have your back? True. Do the students have your back? I'm going to write that story one day because I was in the in the thick of it. Right. But I ain't Mm -hmm. going into it right now. But. But the I know the story. I've yeah. heard you share it plenty times. It's a great story. Man. That thing going to go with me to my grave because I will never because that was my turning point. You put in work in New Jersey when you took that school over. Oh yeah, turned that school around. I appreciate that. That that was my turning point when that happened. My my life shifted forever. Mm-hmm. So I'm never going to forget about those days. So two way street, as you said. So so let me let me go back to that tweet because you said leadership and equity. Right. So uh, in, in terms of that whole question, the principal doesn't have the, the ability to level the playing field. We talked we put it in that context of that new book, Leadership and Equity. So I want to ask you about this word equity. What a word. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know if you deal with what I deal with, but I got some of my clients who plead with me during our our pre uh, conference or pre presentation uh, discussions on Zoom or phone, whatever it is. Principal Kefele, this is post George Floyd. Now, this never happened before George Floyd's murder. Nine minutes, 29 seconds. But now, Principal Kefele, could you like not mention the word equity? Man, I'm hearing that more and more these days. Don't don't say equity. Why? Equity is not a bad word. Mm. It it means, you know, know, everybody's got their own interpretation. But the way I define it is meeting young people where they are, Mm -hmm. as they are, period. What is that's just great teaching. You mm-hmm. don't want me to mention that? Mm-hmm. Then why, why do you want me? Right? So, 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 Doc, here's my question to you. This word equity, it means so many different things to so many different people. What does it mean to you? Well, you know what, Principal Kefele? I remember that me and you were both speakers on the uh, professional development session that Rob Jackson hosted. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, you were just keynote speaker. I was just a breakout speaker. So... <laughs> Of course, I was tuned in to you listening, my brother, Appreciate and you gave a definition of equity that's just like a paradigm shift. And so when I talk about equity, I steal your word that you use. I because I used to say, you know, go above, beyond for all students. Um, but what I, what I think equity is, is like what you said. You said not all students, but each student. Let's look at to see what each individual student needs. And so in short, my definition for equity using your word each would be giving each student what they need. Same thing with teachers and staff, giving each staff what they need and give them what they need in order to to be successful, in order to grow, in order to strive and in order to meet their full potential. So that's what equity is to me is giving each individual what they need to be successful. I love it. And I I, I appreciate everything you said um, prior to that. Hey, y'all, I like these numbers. Hit that tweet, that that retweet. Hit that share button. Let them know we in here, man. We getting ready to get a little heavy now. We in the building. To the book, Building Bridges, Dr. Don Parker, forward written by both our guy, uh, Robert Jackson, 
right? Mm-hmm. So y'all know y'all know him. So get yourself a copy of this book on Amazon. You know, in in chapter one of the book, Doc, you you um you call it develop the mindset. Yes, that, that resonates with me because that's what I'm all about. Mm-hmm. In fact, I wrote here in my personal note: my mindset is my foundation to everything. Yes. Not my skill set. Not my skill set. My mindset is what enabled me to develop a skill set. But I, I think I need to repeat that to somebody out here listening. My mindset is what allowed me to develop my skill set. Yes. If I didn't have the mindset, then I don't know that I'd have the skill sets in various categories that I have today. So and you know what? Let's yeah, look at yeah. That's important because, you know, our, our, our friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Anthony Muhammad, yeah. in his book, he talks about the will and skill and will versus skill. All right. You can develop your skill, but before you develop your skill, you have to have the will in order to do it. That's and right. so you're right. Your mindset is what, you know, has, gives you that will to, you know, have the unction to go ahead and develop that skill. It's harder to grow a person's will than it is to grow their skill. That's right. That, that, that will, and, and as I say in 100% of my presentation, that will is so important, particularly when we talk about effectiveness, but the challenge to it is you and I as professional developers, we can't teach will. Can't we teach can you. only tell you what it is, mm-hmm. but I can't teach you like, a, like, a, like an athletic coach would say, you may have said it in your day, I can't teach heart. Can't teach heart. See, so... One has to check oneself in the mirror, like, like, where's my heart? Where's my mm-hmm. guts? Where's mm-hmm. my audacity? Right? Yep. That's what you, you, I can't teach you to have audacity. I can't teach you to be bold. I can't teach you to have guts. I can't teach you to, none of that. I can only tell you what it is in terms of a dictionary definition. Sure. <laughs> and maybe I could model it. So, so, so with that said, if an AP finds him or herself, I want to I want to make sure that I give this the assistant principal a certain focus here. Okay. If the AP finds himself in a bad situation, i.e., horrible relationship with the principal, not valued by the principal, lack of exposure to the fullness of leadership, full-time disciplinarian, and inevitably less than productive relations with staff which consequently shifts his mindset about being himself and his decision to lead. So here's my question. What can this AP that I have in my imagination do to build a bridge? Watch this. Build a bridge to himself or herself toward protecting his or her mindset to the extent that despite this situation, his mindset or his attitude about himself isn't sabotaged by this present reality. I know that was long. Mm-hmm. Um, so in my book, that first book, you started talking about the first chapter. All right, the mindset, having a mindset. And I tell a story about how I just, you know, gutted my way through college. So really, I, I, I didn't have the skill necessary to be a great student that I needed in order to, you know, breeze through college. A lot of my college classmates, you know, they would be up at night playing video games, hanging out, partying, and show up to to class the next day and just ace the test and get an A. I could study all night and show up to class and then take a test and get a C on it. All right. They were just talented and gifted academically. And so what I had to do was like grind in college, like study hard, go to tutoring um, and just really focus. I couldn't really waste time playing video games. You know, my my life in college was go to class, go to basketball practice, go to tutoring, study. I did that for four years, four years. And so when I look back and I had to uh, convince myself that I had to do whatever it takes in order to be successful, in order to, you know, complete that bachelor's degree. And now the way I look at it is whatever I'm faced with in life, it's like if I said, if I can have that same attitude and that same grit and that same mindset, as you say, I could take that attitude towards whatever challenge I have faced before me. And I could think back, hey, when I was earning my bachelor's degree, man, I was on a grind. I did whatever it took in order to be successful. I was resilient. 
So I have to take that mindset towards whatever challenge. So with that assistant principal, what you have to do is just have the mindset that you're going to hang in there and do what you need to do in order to be successful and in order to grow. So um, what I would do as a, a dean or an assistant principal is just take initiative. Do some of those. You know how a person say, man, I, I didn't know t I was starving until I tasted you. You know, it's a song. It's a pop mm -hmm. song. I, my daughter liked that song. I didn't know that I was starving until I tasted you. All right. And so um, you do the things that your principal don't even know that he needs you to do. And then you look up and you present it to him. It's like, wow, now you're really showing me you more for more than your weight and gold. I appreciate that. So you have to do the work before you have to do the work. I love it. You I have love to take initiative. That's and right. you have to see, see what your principal's blind spots or, you know, areas of growth may be. And then just, you know, lend yourself to doing that, to, to let him know what he don't know. Let her know what she don't know. And then she has that greater appreciation for you. Let him know what he doesn't know. Let her know what she doesn't know. See, I'm on I'm on this whole thing. Those of those that watch this regularly, they know that on my solo Saturdays, except for this coming Saturday, I'm going to deviate. But my solo Saturdays is all about protecting these various aspects of our leadership. And one of those aspects is the mindset, protecting your mindset. So it's like you can develop an attitude, a mindset to, to a point where you are so positive and optimistic about things, but then life happens. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, and, and if, if, if you haven't protected this, then it could be sabotaged by just the normal activities of life. So what if you have, what are you putting in place to protect your mindset from sabotage that can in fact occur? So what you said, oh man, right there with me in terms of, how we go about protecting it so that when I'm in a bad situation, when I'm in a tough situation, when I'm in an overwhelming situation, I don't let this get damaged along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so there's a, a phrase that says uh, conflict is inevitable, mm -hmm. but combat is optional. Mm. All right. And so you have to have a, a, a plan in place as to how you're going to protect your peace. You have to be prepared. You have to you know, foresee these things. And that's what experience does for you. And so what I tell educators is, you know, principals, you know, teachers, deans, assistant principals is you have to have an if, when, then plan in place. Yeah. So, like I said, conflict is inevitable. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when it's going to happen. And then what are you going to do about it? And so when you're managing crises, when you, you know, managing situations that you haven't prepared for, it's like fight Mike Tyson. You remember Bruce Sheldon was going to fight Mike Tyson. And he said, I got a plan. We've been training. I know exactly what we're going to do. We know his strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. And then the, the reporter said, hey, Mike, you know what? This Bruce Sheldon guy is saying he knows your strengths and weaknesses, and he's going to knock you out. Right now, you're undefeated. Mike Tyson said, okay, I know he has a plan, but what's that plan going to do when I punch him right there in his face? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what happened. Michael, uh, Mike Tyson knocked that dude out in the first round. And so what we have to do is, like you said, protect our mind, be strong mentally so that we know the crisis is going to hit or, you know, like you said, that conflict is going to occur. We have to have that inner resilience to know how to deal with it when it happens. I, I, you know, and, and, and Mike, I can't quote him, but a, after that happened, then his, his, his catchphrase was always a plan is good until you get punched in the mouth. That's it. Right. That's it right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so what's your what's your contingency? And you got to, you, and, and that contingency plan has got has got to be written and developed as well. So that's that's important. You know, uh, I, I just want to say this real quick before I go to the next one. Jelani Cortez, I hope you're there. She said, as a new principal at a new school, how do you encourage existing AP who has been at the site for nine years and is, is complacent and has a negative mindset? Jelani, you probably new to us. Um, I, I devoted about two sessions, which which means over two hours to your question. So just scroll back on the channel, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. And check some of that out. And then I got a chapter in it in here, right? So um the assistant principal 50. And 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 I don't know if if, if you want to jump in there, Don, with that one, uh, feel free. Well, you know what? Um what you have to do is like she so it says it's good. She says she did encourage the AP, been at the site for nine years and is complacent. Just have to let them know about the importance of before. All right. You can't be complacent because things are constantly changing. 
uh, what does what is that? You have to first know what is that what is that assistant principal's uh, goals and aspirations. Do they do they even want to grow? Do they even want to wear that principal's hat? Or are they comfortable doing just what they want to do? First, we got to find out what's their intentions, what's their goals and aspirations. All right. And then once we get a feel for that, if they do want to grow, then we have to let them know, hey, let's develop a plan where we can delegate some things to you and you can start uh, taking more responsibilities for things so you can grow your experience and grow your leadership. And uh, my assistant principal, uh, we did that. And, you know, before she was just over reading. She was the assistant principal over reading. So she uh, was working with all the uh, reading teachers in the building and the reading curriculum and things like that. But then next thing you know, she took over our uh, PTO. All right. She took over our bus duty. And now she is going to start her uh, principalship at a, a neighboring suburb, first year principal in, this, in a new district. So congratulations to her. Her name is Dr. Regina Red. Mm. So just growing your principal skills, find out what their aspirations are, put a plan in place and help them grow. Or if they complacent, you know, they, you know, you know what you got. You know what you got. Real quick, uh, uh, Principal Smith King, did you send me that inbox? Because I, I know in Facebook, when, when two people are not friends, it goes to that secondary folder. And I haven't been in there because of my schedule this week. But if you but if you didn't uh, send me that inbox, I can get so I can get you on this schedule. If um and, 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 and that's that, and we'll we we can forge ahead. So let me go. Um, here, here we go, uh, Doctor Parker. Okay. Chapter two. Chapter two of Building Bridges is called "Show That You Care," and to set my question up, you and I, I'm sure, meet countless teachers who say that they feel unsupported by administration. A part of my reason of wanting to do this particular segment today is is be this particular session today is because of that. They say I don't I don't feel supported by administration. They're not a part of my you know my my my, my daily existence in the school. I go on Facebook teacher groups and and I read some of the same things. We don't feel supported by administration. Um, so my question to you, thinking about our topic of building bridges. How, how can an assistant principal or principal build bridges toward demonstrating support and compassion for the staff that they lead? All right. Well, we know what the golden rule is and what the golden rule says is treat others like you want to be treated. Yeah. And so we all want to be treated with respect. We all want it to be uh, viewed as professionals and things like that. And so, uh, the same grace that you would want from your supervisor, you have to extend that same grace, you know, uh, to your staff and to your teachers. All right. We have to let them know, like we said before, we are here for your support. And as we continue to build that trust and just build that relationship with them to let them know, hey, I respect you. Uh, you know, as a teacher, I want to see you thrive. And that's how I go about it is, like I said earlier, building that trust, showing that support and just treating them like I would want to be treated, you know, as a professional and with respect. I love it. So, so, so let's, let's, let's stay there, Don. Um, sometimes as a principal, it, particularly the new folks on here, new principals, new APs, and then we get caught up into watching some of these movies about principal leadership and this, this stereotypical, mm -hmm. we, we, we think that we've got to be this authoritative, you know, almost a, a, a bully. Um, when we're new that I, I, I got I got a rule with an iron fist. Mm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so 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 when we're ruling with an iron fist, it's hard to be a coach with compassion. Yeah, because because we, we, we're looking at a contradiction. I'm ruling with an iron fist. When you see me, you're afraid, you're intimidated, all that kind of thing. So how do I now and I'm, I'm being rhetorical now, how, how do I now coach with compassion toward helping a leader to grow so 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 what i want to ask you holla at some of the newbies on here about going into that school and being intentional about the relationship as opposed to intentional about demonstrating leadership authority all right so my very first principal job i was coming to a school and uh i went through the interview process got the principal job and the superintendent told me, uh, she let me know the condition of the school before I got there. She told me that the principal who was there before me uh, was released in February 
of the previous school year. Mm. Right now, uh, there was an interim principal in the building who was the assistant principal. She became the interim principal of the school. She said there was a divide between the staff. The school was a K through eight school. She said there's a divide between the elementary teachers and the junior high teachers. Even more so than that, she said there's a divide amongst racial lines with the white teachers and the black teachers. And then she also told me that the staff has seemed to lost their belief in the students that the students can achieve. Mm. The staff had this uh, mindset about the students that they couldn't grow. And she just told me it was a, a lack of accountability inside that school. And so you think that a person have to go in there, like you said, with that stereotype, stereotypical iron fist, Joe Clark type of leadership to you know get things on the right track. Um, but what I found is that um, you have to balance building relationships with accountability. And so a lot of principals will go in and set their expectations and say, this is what I expect from you. This is what I expect from you and beat staff over the head with accountability and expectations. But what you have to do really as a strong leader is just let your staff know what they can expect from you. And so when I went into that school, it wasn't with that Joe Clark mentality. It was with the, hey, look, let's look about, let's look at the, the issues and concerns that we have here at this school in this building. What do we need to do best to benefit our students? And then let's have some shared decision-making to change some of the things that need to change around here. And as the leader of this building, this is what you can expect from me. And then I let them know what I expected from them. But I couldn't expect them to do what I needed them to do if they couldn't expect what, the, what couldn't know what they needed to expect from me. So I let them know, hey, I'm going to come in. I'm going to be professional. All right. I'm going to tend to your needs. I'm going to be here to support you. I'm going to make sure that we have a smooth running building. I'm going to make sure we have smooth processes and procedures. All right. And I'm going to let them know that I'm going to be the leader. and I'm going to take the buck stocks with me. All right. I let them know that. I let them know what they could expect from me. So when you go into the building, all right, instead of just first off, you know, coming off the top, but like, hey, this is what I expect from you. It's like a teacher going in the classroom and uh, rolling out their behavior expectations before they take their time to build the relationships with their students. Yeah. And so that's what I did. I went in first, letting them know what they can expect from me to let them know that there's nothing I'm going to ask you to do that I wouldn't do myself. Mm. I love it. And, and see, look, look what Darlene Pettit wrote. She said, so true. I've worked under leaders like that. I was afraid to go to the restroom. Also, if I wasn't on the exact point in the lesson plan, I felt anxious. You know, of course, there's a level of accountability. Of course, there, there's, there, 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 there's certain things that we, we, we need to happen in classrooms. But I don't want my teachers operating in fear. Right. I, I, I do want the accountability. I do want to earn the respect, but I don't want teachers afraid of my presence. Right. I don't want them afraid of me. I don't yeah. want I don't want them to feel that I can't do this, this human thing of using the restroom, which happens to all of us at some point in our day. Right. So, um, you know, so those so 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 again. For that AP that's looking to transition, even that veteran principal who has forgotten some of these things, that human element. Well, think about it. Think about it, Principal Confetti. You're exactly right because think about an athlete and think about you want them to perform at their highest level. Yeah. But if you're nervous, guess. if you're afraid of making a mistake, then your, your game is not just going to freely flow. You can tell I'm a, I'm a former basketball player because I'm just picking myself dribbling and, you know, going to the hole, doing a layup. All right. But if you're afraid, if this is so much, you know, uh, tension and, you know, if the stakes are so high where you feel like you're going to get yanked if you make a mistake – you know, then you, you won't be able to free flow. You can't perform at your highest level when you're under so much tension and stress. And so that's what culture and climate is about. And you write about it in your book where you talk about the importance of school culture and the importance of school climate. In order for your teachers to strive, they have to be in an environment where they know they can take risks, where they know the principal supports them, where they know that they're not going to get nitpicked and micromanaged to death. All right. Because when you do that, you hold people back. And so that's why you have to have that that culture where everyone can grow and thrive. And the only way to grow is is by taking risks and trying new things. And I want my teachers to have a space and feel comfortable doing that. You, you know, you said nitpicking, right? And 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 micromanaging. See, that's how 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 do I grow when I got somebody nitpicking and I got to keep looking over my shoulder? How do I grow? when I'm being micromanaged, mm -hmm. right? It's, 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 it's probably impossible. 
And I and and I remember as a leader being micromanaged. Mm -hmm. and, and I literally exploded. But again, that's for another time. Right. But I, I can't be I can't grow. I can't bring my kaumba creativity if I'm being micromanaged by somebody else, because now you have reduced me to a robot. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer me. I'm a robot. So I don't want staff to feel that they're these these robots in the school. No, I want to give them the freedom to grow and to soar like this 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 jet plane, man, that they can just soar. <laughs> that's, that's what I want them to be able to do. You're absolutely right. And I got to get a give a shout out to somebody on the call. Yeah, uh, my principal colleague who worked in the same district as I did when I was a principal uh, at Lincoln. And that's Dot Majid Majid. I call her Dot. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. So Dot, she had a reputation for you know, holding her staff accountable and then treating them to lunch. <laughs> she, she, she let them know, you know, hey, this is what's going on. This is what I expect, you know, and correct the behavior. But then, hey, there's no hard feelings. Let me buy you lunch. You know, I appreciate you. All right, let's, straight, let's get this straightened out. Let's move ahead. And that's what it's about. You you balance that accountability and relationships. You let them know, hey, you know what? It's, it's for the, the betterment of you and for this building. We have to do what we know is right. When you, yeah, people going to make mistakes. All right. And we can't turn a blind eye at the mistakes. You know, you don't see everything. All right. Not I mean, you see it, but you don't you don't call everything. But those things that you have to call, you have to call and then you grow from it. It's just like any relationship. You go through a hard time, but then you work through it. And then next thing you know, your relationship is stronger as a result. And that's the same mentality that leaders can, can take when they're working with their staff as well. I'm loving this conversation, man. It's uh, you bringing some rich stuff here. You bringing some rich stuff, you know. And uh, and and shout out to Doc to uh, Doc McKeever Jeter. You know, she was on here a few months ago. Yes, yeah, she was. I saw her show. It was yeah. excellent. Yeah, and and I mean, just the love she got. She because we talked on the phone a little bit after that, and just the love she got from people reaching out. You know, it's um good stuff i see it right yeah, now. she's a gym yep she, she's definitely a gym yep yep hey hey doc um building bridges in chapter three is called culture for learning mm -hmm. and you know we could probably talk we could do a whole session just on culture for learning right yeah and I, I just want to give this quick example then i want to turn it to you my first year no my second year as a principal in this particular school district the superintendent wanted to departmentalize us. So instead of, so from third grade on, I was a fifth grade teacher, third graders changed classes. Mm. So the school wasn't accustomed to that. So there was noise in between classes in the hallway because that was something very new. Mm -hmm. Well, my principal could not tolerate the noise. So she brought us to the office. I mean, to we, we had a meeting and she said, she was yelling at us. She said, effective tomorrow, the students will stay put and the teachers will change classes, which meant wow. that I was going to be in someone else's environment yeah. three or four times in the day. Mm. And I had, you know, I'd never grandstand. I waited for everybody to leave after the meeting. I said, Doc, wait a minute now. <laughs> that classroom's walls and ceiling in terms mm -hmm. of what I got hanging from them ceilings, those are an extension of me. Yes. And those comprise the culture of the room because everything in those walls is about them 25 kids is in there during those given periods. I can't be in someone else's room because I don't have the support of the environment Absolutely. that I have in my room, right? So Absolutely. she heard me. No, she first she didn't hear me. She said to me, I will never forget this. I, I talked to her the other day. She's, we, we still friends. And this was back in the 90s. She said, well, Kefele, I suggest you strap that room on your back because you're going to be changing classes tomorrow. -wee. That's what I said. Woo -wee. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was too new to fight it. So, so I said, Doc, please, I need the walls. I got student picks up. I got gold mm -hmm. up. I got this. I got awards up. I got all this stuff. I need that in that room. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, then y'all, I better not hear one student voice between them classes. That, but now on, I went to my my, my um, colleagues. I said, look here, I can't teach in y'all rooms. 
make sure your kids are quiet between these classes because I got to be in my room. Here's my point. Mm -hmm. That room was part of that culture. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So my question to you, how does an AP or principal build bridges? Because I keep using your language of the title of the book. Mm -hmm. Assist a teacher with developing a culture of learning. All right. Well, you, you, it's, 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 again, it's setting those expectations, letting the students know, hey, you know what? Yes, we invite, created a climate where of love, of acceptance, a culture of belonging, and that all that is great. But when it's time to get down to learning, it's time to get down to learning. Yeah. All right. And a teacher shows that by the way they uh, create their environment. So when you walk into your house, all right, you see pictures of your family. All right, you see pictures of, the, of, of things that remind you of your loved ones, whatever decorative style that you have. All right, it shows in your home. It's the same thing with that classroom. You want to make a, a, a home like environment in your classroom where it's like a family like environment. And so in that classroom, you, like you said, you got your students' pictures on the wall, you have your data walls, you have your samples of your students' work, you have your furniture arranged in a way where it's easy to maneuver throughout the the uh, class, what could be hybrid, where students can work as individuals or work in groups. The whole environment is set up for a climate of learning. And so when it's time to flip that switch and say, okay, guys, now it's time for instruction, it's time for us to get down to business, then the kids' mind automatically switch, hey, it's time to learn. We got to sit up and it's ready to learn. And that's what it's about. That environment has to be set up for the way you maneuver as a teacher and the way you teach and how you move and how you interact with your students. So it all goes from that, that bridge building relationship. Like you have to have a relationship with your students and your students have to have a relationship to that classroom where it's a family-like environment when they walk into it. And that, you know, that word family, that's the word right there. That's it. If, if, if we're disjointed in that classroom, we're not connected. We're not connected to staff and there's no sense of oneness. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I, I was saying to you off, 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 um, offline i think i was saying that yeah i did when when i do a big keynote i got a signature song we are one by frankie beverly and Mays. i come out on that stage and i start doing my two-step and i invite the the audience to do the mm -hmm. two-step with me and when he get to that line we are one i say everybody put your finger up and let's sing this we are one mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 just just encouraging them to have this spirit that while we're in this space together we want Absolutely. We ain't separate as the fingers. We one as the fist, as Booker T. Washington would say. Mm -hmm. so, so, so with that, you know that 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 chapter five, building bridges is called is 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 called a classroom management, and classroom management plan, I should say. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, when I look at classroom management, I say that it's it goes hand in glove with the culture of the room. I don't Absolutely. think one talk about classroom management without talking culture and in one case i don't think one could talk culture without talking classroom management but i want you to think about that assistant principal or principal who feels or has a reality of being so overwhelmed that i can never ever get into a classroom right mm -hmm. so now as a as an ap or a principal i'm dealing with the consequences of perhaps a flawed or non-existent classroom management plan, but I'm not in position to cor to rectify it because I'm trapped in my office reading referrals. So I want you to talk to us about the AP or principal in that situation and how they go about spending time in that classroom toward gauging what the problem may actually be. Okay. Yeah. So you got, it. so from what it sounds like is you have a person that you know, you you know, you know the saying, you guys are familiar with the saying, uh, you can't see the forest for the tree that's right there in front of your face. Like you in it, right? And so whenever the train gets off the track, you have to step back and see, okay, where exactly did this happen? And so what you need to do is just uh, you know, give yourself a moment to breathe. Like I said, reflection is very important. Self-reflect, step back and say, okay, what needs to happen in order to improve this situation? And so you have to, like you said, uh, take on that instructional leadership where you are in classrooms, you know, looking at instruction. Uh, you have to set that up in the beginning. And so even if, of course, we all know that it's easier to keep control 
in the beginning than it is to gain control, you know, further along in the school year. However, if you're further along in the school year and you still have discipline issues in your building, what you have to do is you have to go back to it. You have to go back, reset those, restate those expectations, you know, have students model what you expect that behavior to be like. And you have to have some like true interventions for those students who need those interventions so they can get their behavior back on track. That's why early intervention is so key. All right. And give those students the support that they need in order to learn how to sit and behave. Like if you had to even like pull some students out of the classroom and have your social worker uh, sit with a group of students that may be tier two. And that's what they do is go go about hallway behavior. How do we behave in a cafeteria? All right. Um, how do we get away that anxiousness so that the student can now sit in that classroom and learn? Then you have to do that. So you have to put interventions in place that's going to address the behavior instead of being a fireman and running to put out fires all day. You got to get a, a sustainable uh, management plan that's going to work on going so you can then focus on that instruction. And, and you know, a key word you said, a noun, is, is a, a, a fireman, right? Wearing that fireman's hat. We, we can't do this work as firefighters. I mean, if, 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 we, if, we're, if you're in that, if, if you're feeling like you're doing fireman's work, then go take the test and be a fireman or a firewoman. Our, our role is that of leading a school. So if you're putting out fires all day, then there's, there's a whole lot of shifting that has to be done. You know, uh, let, let's stay there, Don, because that person, that firefighter, I know they're on this thread right now. Man, I was a firefighter once too. I know. I was one too. I, I did a good job, man. <laughs> I, I, I put out some fire. I mean, I, I would put out maybe 20 fires a day. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But but you know something? The test scores came out after I finished putting out all them fires. Right. And 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 I prided myself on my ability to put out fires. I mean, and I put the, on the friggin' hat. Right. So now my, my the, the test scores come out and my supervisor who used to be my mentor for doing my apprenticeship he called me right to the office and, and as a as a sidebar he's now the husband of the of the principal that told me to strap my classroom on my back they got married right uh -huh. <laughs> so so he calls me to his office and like what's up we we mean doc your test scores i said doc you see the hours i put in yeah i see it but I question how I see how hard you work, but I question how smart you work. Mm. And it took me two it took me two days to recover from that state. Mm -hmm. Boom! Yeah. Right there! Right there! Right there! Boom! Boom! Punch! To My wife, she, play, she come on camera now. I came home and broke down and cried of anger. I wanted to punch holes in the wall. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I was fired up. To, you have the audacity. But once once I got past, the ego got past that, I said, mm -hmm. yeah, he told the truth. So yeah. it's an AP on here somewhere. I know they here. I, matter of fact, let me look at the camera. I know you here. Mm -hmm. Talk to that AP. How do I transition out of being a firefighter? Well, you know, um, a leader. So, so I read uh, a tweet the other day that says the principal job has changed uh, now from what it was ten years ago. Yeah, and so yeah. Oh, we were building managers probably 10, 20 years ago. We building managers. But as we moved into the mid, uh, what, not even mid, the early 2000s, all right, like around 2005, 2012, in between that time, the really emphasis really started coming down to data. And now you have to shift from being a building manager to being instructional leadership. Yeah. And so the pendulum swings as we come back from the pandemic now. It's about students social and emotional learning and making sure our students now don't know how to behave once they get back into the building. But then it's also that instructional loss that they that they said we suffered uh, during the pandemic. So now it's also not only kids social emotional learning and how they interact in the building, but now also how we trying to close that learning gap. Yeah. And so what they say, the pendulum where it falls is probably somewhere in the middle now. And so the, what I've always heard is that you have to spend 51 percent of your time being an instructional leader and 50 uh 49 percent of the time doing everything else all right and so you are not always going to be the best instructional leader you are not always going to be the best building manager all right it's it's hard to find that balance but what has to happen is the harmony all right some things sometimes things are not always balanced 
but they have to be in harmony. So when it's time for you to be that building manager and, and focus on that, then it's time. But then you also have to make sure that you are looking at that crucial element of your school data, your student achievement, and being an instructional leader and giving your staff tools and resources and instructional practice that's going to help them grow and improve their practice in the classroom. I love it. And, you know, just, just to let the audience know, uh, next week, and, and this is like a two-parter, see the comment on the screen, how might we prevent the fires from being started? Let me, let me couple that with what I'm getting ready to say. Next week is my solo day. And the first Saturday is always my solo day. And then I bring guests the rest of the month. I'll, I'll be talking about creating your developing your leadership blueprint. So so to Aqu uh, Aquaeus Kelly, uh, I'm going to answer that next Saturday um, in terms of developing your leadership blueprint. So I want you to uh, make sure you tune in at 1055 because we gonna, it's, it'll be on the whole time. Of course, you can watch the video, but I want you to be on with me live next week. But but also to, to you, uh, Dr. Parker, he said, how might we prevent the fires from being started? Right. So 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 you and I are talking about reacting to fires. He's saying, how do I prevent them? This is not my solo day. So I don't I don't want to even delve into that. Uh, I want to throw that one at you. Uh, hey, Doc, what are your thoughts about how we prevent the fire from even occurring? Okay, say that one more time, Principal Kefele. How can yeah, I? The, the comment is right on the screen. How he, he said he's saying, how might we prevent the fires from being started? Okay, so like like I said, with that fight with Mike Tyson, crisis is going to happen. All right. Uh, so of course we have to have, like you said, Principal Kefele, our contingency plans and things like that. But the way you really keep the fires from happening is just making sure that you keep you know your ear to the pulse of what's going on in your school. You have to have your teachers that are constantly inform you of things that's going on. You have to have your students as well, those relationships. So when they know that something is going on in the building, they feel comfortable coming to you to tell you. I can tell you how many fights and how many, um, you know, uh, union issues that I was able to cut off because I had the relationship with the teachers. I had the relationship with the students who came to see me and like, hey, doc, you know what? This is going on. And so. I would make it a priority to address, you know, those issues that they told me. I wouldn't ignore them. So mm -hmm. you, you can't ignore it. You have to have an uh, uh, open line of communication, all right, with those trusted staff members and those students. And so I, I, I did have informant students <laughs> in my building. And that's what they were. They were my informants. Yeah. And you know what? I'm getting candy. I'm getting candy. I'm getting free admission and things like that. I'll let them know. You look, I appreciate you. Thank you. And it wasn't as to bribe them to keep to let me know what was going on, but it was more so I appreciate you. And this is how I'm showing you my appreciation. I gave my, my, my students perks and they continue to inform me. Same thing with teachers. Just let them know, hey, I appreciate you support me, having my back. Thank you for letting me know what's going on. Like that, that union leader in your building should be your best friend. Best, right? best so friend. So yo, you guys are heading off anything that may be coming down the pipeline. So you don't want things to get to that level. And that's the way you prevent those fires is, is by, you know, building allies within your building. You know, I my principalship goes back to before email and the Internet were a thing. Right. Um, and I had I, too, had those allies. I had I had a whole lot of them in, in terms of staff. And I had this little box in my office and I would say, if there's anything that I need to know about anything, just put it on a little slip of paper, put it in that box, and I will get it. Mm -hmm. And, man, I was on top of everything, right, because they kept me informed because I had this. See, you you, you, you know, you and I got to earn that one. And if we don't earn that one, we don't have that, that, that. That's not relevant for a student to let you know things that, that the student deems that I need to know as the leader of the building, right? I got two more for you. Okay. Uh, folks, uh, let's see. It's twelve thirty-one Eastern time. We going a little over, but that's all right. We talking free F R E E P D. <laughs> so, 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 like, like I say every now and then, don't get mad at Kafele because he went over on the free P D. <laughs> Man, I like Kafele, but he go overtime on the free P D. No, you that's, didn't say that to me, did you? He that's went just your generosity. You just pouring it. That's the love you have for, for, for your people, Principal Kefele. 
I mean, go ahead and pay the fifteen hundred dollars and go get the same stuff. <laughs> hey, here we go. Here we go. Um, I love this one here. Building bridges is called in in chapter six of building bridges is called connect through content. Yeah. Now I know you got your own thoughts in that in terms of instruction. With me, those that know my work intimately, you know that cultural relevance is at my core it is in my soul it, it is who i am what i'm about right it's so i want to ask you as it relates to administration of staff mm -hmm. given what i just said about cultural relevance and its significance in terms of curriculum and instruction where youngster gets to see self in the learning um how might an assistant principal or principal build a bridge with a teacher toward ensuring that instruction and learning is culturally relevant in the classroom? You have to make those connections. And so culturally responsive teaching, there's a lot of elements of culturally responsive teaching that are the same elements of what we call best practicing, where you're building on prior knowledge, where you're scaffolding, where you're meeting a student in their stretch zone or in their growth growth, growth growth zone to give them the kind of instruction that they're ready for next. And so when you culturally responsive teaching, what you try to do is you try to find ways in which the student can connect with that curriculum. And once the student can connect with that curriculum and they can see how it, um, how they've had an experience with what you're talking about, it just makes that learning so much easier. It makes those connections so much easier. And then also it comes down to a sense of pride where when the person can see their culture in what they're reading, in what they're doing, and now they say, wow, you know what? I feel valued, I feel seen, I feel heard. And so that's what culturally responsive teaching is about. It's about connecting to students' prior experiences you know, that they experienced in their life, or maybe it may be connecting to their prior learning, but then also how we make their culture so they can see themselves in that curriculum so they don't think, well, this really doesn't apply to my life because I have to experience things that my teacher may not have had to experience if they come from a different cultural background. But how can we make this culture relevant for me so I can see how I can take and apply what you're teaching me to my real life and to the real world? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got one more. And folks, uh, hang in there with us because I want you to get uh, Dr. Parker's contact information, book information, how to book them to come to you, um, and all that good stuff. And I got to, and, and, and plus we got to get them twenty-one bam questions. So this is the last one. School is opening this week, Dr. Parker, as you know, for a lot of school districts across the South, mm -hmm. uh, maybe some northern uh, states, but certainly in the South, school is open. In fact, my, my man, Dr. Uh, Principal Carlos Baggage, they started yesterday on a Friday in July. Right. So school is opening. What what words given our audience? You know, we got a lot of young people on here. We got a lot of a lot of new administrators. We got a lot of assistant principals, but we also have some veterans here. Mm -hmm. What would be that thing, that salient point that you may want to make that advice to to a leader on this platform who is starting school next week, the week after very soon toward going in there and, and increasing the probability of a great start for the 22 23 school year but think about it let's say if you were uh starting a new job all right and you were just showing up on the first day what kind of reception would you want all right how does you how do you want that to feel how do you want to feel received how do you how do, how do you want that reception to make you feel it's the same thing with staff and students you have to imagine how do i want them to feel as they you know approach our school grounds how do we want them to feel once they walk on the campus how do we want them to feel when they walk through our school doors all right it's like you said before, family. So you have to uh, understand that you want to connect emotionally with everyone who's going to be in your building. So they have this great uh, feeling like, hey, this is a place that I want to be. These people want me here and just make it exciting. And so, like I said before, so many teachers make the mistake of going into the classroom and talking about rules and talking about academics and instruction like that. But you have to do some relationship building activities, you know, on that first day. Yeah. You have to uh, really learn your students, get to know the students. So have icebreakers on deck, you know, have have um, like some high energy uh, things where, where people can really be hands on doing experiences together where they're learning one another 
and creating those classrooms where they're getting to know the, the teachers, teachers are getting to know the students, and students are getting to know each other. All right, we have to have all that going on. Well, it's a lot of relationship building, icebreaker, circles, all those kind of activities. And then you have to just shout the message, like say it over and over again. Hey, you know what? I'm happy you're here. I value you. I respect you. You are worthy and you are worth it. And we're here for you. And give that message to staff and students. Powerful response. I love it. Hey, Doc, um, let's transition into the, the BAM questions, the BAM impact questions. One word answer, one sentence max. Right. And we go rapid fire. I'm going to do my best. You know, I'm long-winded. Principal Kefele, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> Here we go. Is education on the right path for underserved students? Yes. Can true equity occur in America's schools for Black, Brown, and other underserved students? Because of people like us on this call. Yes. Can Dr. Don Parker's work contribute to the progress we desperately need? 100%. My new book coming out is titled Be the Driving Force for Enhancing Equity in Your School. Love it. If you could do a reset on your life, would your line of work be different or the same? The same. Why do you continue to do this work? Because I love our youth and I love our educators who put in work. What fires you up within the work that you do? When it manifests. What do you love about the work you do? Serving others. What do you dislike about the work that you do? Politics. That's 99% of the answers. <laughs> what, is, what has been your greatest victory in this work? Like I said in the beginning, taking students from tragedy to triumph. What was your greatest mistake in this work? Hmm. Um, not being prepared. What has been your greatest challenge in this work? Getting people to uh, latch on to the vision, changing mindsets. Are you proud of your first year as an assistant principal? 50-50. Are you proud of your first year as a principal? Not because I perform well, but because how much I learn. Who inspires you in the work that you do? Principal Kafele, <laughs> Anthony Muhammad, yeah. and so many other great principals have been trailblazers. I appreciate that. What are you reading right now? It could be book, blog, article, what, whatever. Uh, I'm reading Lori Draskell's book called The Leadership Gap. What book would you recommend for our viewers this morning, this afternoon now? Mm, um, I would say um, Staff Culture. Uh, it's a piece by Anthony, Dr. Anthony Muhammad. Mm, okay. Um, what, 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 do you, what do you want to accomplish that you haven't accomplished yet? You know, uh, just to continue to grow and reach other educators to support educators so they can support students are you satisfied with where you are now professionally no what could you say to a viewer out there who continues to face closed doors keep keep knocking what, what could you say to a viewer out there who's lost their fire remember your why remember your why and if dr don parker was a word in a dictionary what would be your definition Hmm. A learner. Learner. I like that. Hey, Doc, that takes us to the end. And I, I, I want to thank you um, immensely for bringing so, so much substance to this platform today. I want to thank you for having me. And I want to thank all your guests and listeners for embracing me and, you know, taking time to have this conversation with, with you and I. Oh, yeah. And, and, and just as I, you know, as I say to folks when they come on here, you definitely hit it out the park. Josh Gibson style, Homestead Grays, 800 plus home runs, <laughs> grand slams, all the all of the above. You hit it out the park. Folks, I'm glad you 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 know the you know the routine, you know the drill. Hit them fire emojis, hit them bombs, hit them 
them them hearts, you know, whatever your favorite is. And that's the applause we use, those diamonds that, that you use, especially those targets I see. Hit those, hit them all up and let Don know. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. And if you and don't. I want to learn your stories okay. too because I, I just see greatness all in this feed right here. There's some great people that's, that's logged on to the call. And I know we have a, a, a team of great listeners here. And I just want to encourage you guys to keep up the great work. You are definitely needed. Definitely. Well, let them let them know how they can bring you through or how they can get your books or how they can follow you on social media, get in contact with you. Give them everything. OK, they can follow my Facebook page and uh, my regular Facebook page is, is Don Parker. But my business speaking Facebook page is Dr. Don Parker. That's Dr. period Don Parker. My Twitter is Dr. Don Parker one. There's no dot in there. Just Dr. Don Parker one. And my email is Dr. Dot. Don Parker at Comcast.net. Again, that's dr. Don Parker at Comcast.net. And um, that's it. That's my Facebook. That's my Twitter. That's my email. And on Instagram, I'm also Dr. Don Parker. And and those of you who were writing and, and didn't get it all in, remember this is this is recorded. So on, those of you on Facebook, those of you on Twitter, those of you on YouTube, just rewind it. And, uh, and get it all down. And then also, Doc, here's the current book, Building Bridges, right? Engaging students at, uh, at risk through the power of relationships. This is mm -hmm. your current book. Yep. Hey, y'all, get your copy today. This is a powerful book, right? So get your copy today. Let's send it to number one on Amazon. And, um, and then also, Doc, tell them about that new book coming. Okay, so the new book is called Be the Driving Force, Enhancing Equity in Your School. And what that book is about is the title is Be the Driving Force. And so what I do is I combine three elements and I'm making an, an, an analogy with uh, leadership. Uh, like I said, be the driving force of a car, anything that has to do with the car or driving, and then also equity. And so throughout the book, I make analogies. So one of the analogies that I make is one thing I took from you, Principal uh, Kefele, is how vision is so important mm -hmm. to lead in the school. And what I do is I tie in the analogy of when you're driving the car, they teach you to see as far down the road as you can. So you can see whatever hazards might be in the road. But then also you can see where you're going. And so I use that analogy of, you know, vision for, you know, building your vision statement and having a vision for where you want to take the school and how important it is that you have a great vision while you're driving. And then I just talk about establishing that vision for your school and then going there. And then another part, you know, to give you an example is, you know, how the engine is the start of the car. That's the heart of the car. And I talk about how as a leader, you are the heart of that school. Without you, that school won't go anywhere. And then uh, uh, one more example that I give is I talk about how as the building leader, you know how it takes a key to start the car, Principal Kefele? That's right. And I'm leaving with this. All right. Uh, as a leader, you have to believe that you are the key in order to get things going mm. in your school because without the key, the car won't start. So then I ask leaders, I say, now we have new technology, just like you have to continue to grow. So now most cars, you don't have a traditional key, but they're pushed to start. And then I ask the leaders, what push do you need to start? Wow. I love it. Push to start. I love it. What I push love do you need to start leading like you need to in order to build that equity in your school. I love it. So you, you all got it. So um, get in touch with them and check them out. All that good stuff. Hey, Don, stay there until I close out. I want to just close us out. Folks, once again, uh, and, and, and you know something, Don, before I do, I, I kept that up deliberately. Albert Buckles, this this mm -hmm. sums it up, man. This PD session today was absolutely fire, fire, Appreciate fire. you, Albert. Appreciate you. I had multiple eye-opening moments. Thank you. AB, appreciate you, bro. That's it, AB. So, hey, folks, uh, appreciate you all being here as always. Let me just give you the quick rundown. I'm up solo next week, first Sunday. I mean, not first Sunday, first Saturday, <laughs> first Saturday. And I'm, I'm calling it developing your leadership blueprint. And this is the launch of new school year. Let me tell you something. I know you can reach the watch the recordings, but you don't want to miss this. Right. You don't want to miss this. Develop. I'm, this is going to be the first time in 119 weeks. I'm using a PowerPoint because I want to make sure you get this. I normally don't use one. But this, um, I don't think my clients will mind this because it's just mm. a template. So I'm, for the first time, 100 week number 119, I'm using the PowerPoint. You don't want to miss next Saturday. Um, make sure 
that you're watching Sean Hurd at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live, followed by Dr. Sheikha Houston and soon to be Dr. Tammy Taylor with Create and Educate at 1030. That's Facebook Live. My man, Josh Tovar and Dean Packard on Sundays at 7. And then the Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams Tuesday and Thursday at 6. You know, Dr. Roz, if you're here and Coach Williams, I got to get you on here in 2023 as well. Um, make sure that you get Don's book. And then while you're on there, just hook me up, right? Get on um, the assistant principal 50. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Get the equity and social justice education 50. Later for all the other ones. I oh, I forgot one. to tell them, uh, Principal yeah. Kenfele, I quote you multiple times in my new book. So as they oh. read my, my book, I want them to look for all the places where I put, you know, Kefele like 2021 or Kefele 2019. Just look oh, for those man. quotes, guys. <laughs> wow. I'm honored by that. I'm no big doubt. honored by that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all, visit principalcafele.com. Once again, principalcafele.com for all those additional resources. They're sitting there for free. Some a client just said to me the other day, they said, they literally said, My God, you're giving away everything. I said, Yeah, yeah, but you know, I know where my blessings come from. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm good. So, so so make sure you go to the site and check out all them blogs and articles and videos and so forth. Subscribe, hit that red button to the virtual AP Leadership Academy on YouTube. Right? That's that's a very we got 16,000 subscribers. So I want to take that higher. Right. So subscribe to that. Not just watch the videos, but hit the red button. Subscribe on that channel. Like and follow the virtual AP Leadership Academy Facebook page, because that that commentary that I write every Sunday morning is exclusive to that page. I don't write it. I don't post it anywhere else. I might post all of them tomorrow in, in one blog post because it'll be number 75. So that's a big number. I've written 75 commentaries now. Right. Out of one hundred and nineteen, one hundred eighteen weeks. So I may put them all together and post it as one blog post tomorrow for, for number seventy five and then do it again when I hit one hundred. So like and follow that Facebook page. And then lastly, your diet, your exercise and your covid precautions. And, and, and Dr. Parker is one that lives in the gym. Oh, got to. Right? Yeah, he lives in the gym. I live, you know, I live on the gym, but mine is confined to a treadmill and sometimes a bike. But and but mine, my purpose is probably a little different from his. Mine is a reaction to a heart attack. So, I, you know, it's like I have no choice but to do that. But I'm, but it's getting done nevertheless. So make sure that you, you're careful with that diet. Don't just put in your mouth anything you want. It's, you know, make sure it's healthy for you. Thank Get you. the exercise in and, and, and make sure you're taking COVID. And now I might add and monkeypox precaution. Mm. Right. I literally dreamt last night that I had monkey pox. I, I dreamt it was all over my body. I hope that that was just a dream and it doesn't become my reality. But that was my dream last mm. night. Right. So other than that, folks, appreciate you being here. Have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back. Count to three. One, two, three. Bam! <laughs> My man, Principal Fele. <laughs> I see you next Saturday at 1055. Be safe, everybody.